As we get ready to approximate the area under the curve, we need to understand how to use sigma notation. The sigma is like an S in Greek and it stands for the sum of. Here n is called the upper limit. i equals 1. 1 is called the lower limit. i is called the index. And here we have a sub i is the thing we're taking the summation of. Now what we do is we replace i with the lower limit. So we get i1. Then we add 1 to that. It becomes a sub 2. And we continue until we get to the upper limit, however far that is. This is very important as we proceed, so let's look at some examples to make sure we're able to work with sigma notation here i goes from 1 to 4 to i plus 3. So first we put a 1 in for it, so we have 2 times 1 plus 3, plus we put 2 in for i, then we put 3 in for i, then we put 4 in for i, and then we stop since we've reached our upper limit, so we have 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3. 6 plus 3 plus 8 plus 3. So altogether we have 2, we have 10, 20, 26, 29, 32. Remember this means the summation if you add them all together. Suppose we have something a little more complicated, i squared plus 3i minus 2. Notice we start with i equal 4, which is unusual. So we take 4 squared plus 3 times 4 minus 2. To that we'll add we increment up to 5, so we take 5 squared plus 3 times 5 minus 2, so we have 16 plus 12 minus 2 plus 25 plus 15 minus 2, so we have 28 minus 2 is 26, 25 and 15 is 40, so we have 66 minus 2. So our final answer in this case would be 64. Finally, we are not restricted to only working in the numerator. We could have 1 divided by j. j goes from 1 to 5. So we would have 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5. And if we use our calculator and add all these together, we wind up with 2.283. 3, 3 as our summation. Sigma notation, sigma is a Greek letter that means add them together.